Okay. I think all of you have already finished uh, recording your attendance. So let me just share uh, the slides. Hope that you can see this slide. Huh? If anything happened during uh, if anything happened in terms of connection or the, the slides, uh, the, the presentation slide doesn't appear at your screen, just let me know. Okay. Okay. Alright. Okay, doctor. Apa yang keluar kat situ tu? Saya, saya nampak macam ada orang raise your hand macam ni lah. Somebody raise his hand. Alright. Okay. So, we we'll start with the objectives. Which is, uh, objective means uh, cost, not cost learning outcome, but it is basically the uh, topic learning outcome. Eh? So, this is topic learning outcome. Hopefully, uh, when we finish this topic, the student will be able to, uh, first one, to understand the difference between project breadboarding, prototyping, and production. So basically, uh, we have different stages of development in design, eh? especially in design of the PCB or el ele electronic equipments. Okay, uh, one of the stage is breadboarding stage. Okay, and then after we finish breadboarding stage, we will do prototyping. And then after we finish prototyping, uh, our product is ready to be mass produced. Uh, we proceed to the production stage. So basically, there are actually uh, at the beginning of this topic, the topic of this like this uh, course, you have learned about five stages of development, referring to the development in terms of electronic equipment development, uh, which is that five stages is basically uh, the first one is design, and then second one is drawing, the third one is experimenting, the fourth one is prototyping, and then finally the fifth stage is testing, troubleshooting, and uh, documentation. Okay, testing, troubleshooting, and documentation. All right, so. Now we reach to the experimenting stage. So what is experimenting stage? Then, uh, so that one, that one is the the first objective or, or the learning outcome of this topic, which is to differentiate between project breadboarding, prototyping, and production. Okay. The second objective or learning outcome for you to learn in this uh, topic is to describe the soldering and desoldering process. So, what are the things that we need in doing the soldering? So, when we begin the soldering process, what are the things, what tools, tools required for soldering process? Okay, in soldering process, what sort of consumables? Consumables mean uh, our electronic components. What sort of components required when we do the soldering? And then, also, uh, similarly for the desoldering process, what is actually the desoldering process? So it is uh, opposite word for the soldering, right? So basically, soldering is to tie that bind, means that uh, to connect the joints, uh, to connect the component leads to the uh, solder pad. Okay, so that is soldering, the soldering process. Desoldering is we want to uh, disassemble, disassemble the circle or we want to disconnect the component out of the PCB board. So that is the soldering. So normally in soldering and desoldering process, uh, what we have to know is not just uh, watch the video or just follow the online lecture like this. Basically, what you have to do about soldering and desoldering is uh, you yourself, you have to experience it, meaning that you have to do. Uh, so in this case, what I will do is 
to assign you the mini projects okay all of you i think maybe in group you will do the mini project that will expose you to using the solder okay using the solder iron then do the soldering and then do the desoldering process and then also uh, do the connection test the connections okay observe the circuit okay so that sort of thing you have to experience by yourself because i cannot teach you because we are online right so basically if we don't get into the magma the lab so what you have to do is you have to do according to uh, what is instructed in this uh, lecture materials then you you follow all of the procedures and the precautions okay so because I, I cannot demonstrate but i will i will have i will try to demonstrate by using my my camera here i will i will use I will use some setups here to show you to demonstrate to you on how to do the soldering. But basically, uh, the most important thing is for you to experience it by yourself. Okay, number three, explain the breadboard system. So basically, in our previous uh, in our previous uh, meeting, we have discussed about breadboarding. Eh? which is part of the uh, in breadboard drawing also we have discussed about uh, some of the uh, something that is uh, important for you guys to know about breadboard actually physically the breadboard is should looks like this eh? what i am holding now this is the breadboard uh, it's not um, the the board like this eh? so this one is uh, pcb okay this one is pcb some copper at the surface of this PCB, but this one is breadboard. Okay, so you should know uh, how breadboards function. Okay, before you you use the breadboard, you should know how it's function. Okay, because uh, there are different connections uh, between among the holes on the breadboard here. So different connection. So you have to know. To avoid mistake in terms of to make sure that when you put your component like if i have my components here which is led here on my hand so if you put the component you you have to make sure that you you securely put it into the correct holes okay if you mistakenly put the uh, component which is like this if you put the components uh, for positive and negative lead to the same to the same hole i mean to the hole that is connected which is what you have done was uh, you have make the that led already short okay if it is short then it will burn out okay so the component will be broken right and then number four okay after this after completing this topic hopefully student will know how to document the breadboarding stage so basically for engineers technician or technologists when they do the product development to design something to design the system okay basically uh, in parallel with the design of the system or uh, tools or product they will have to document okay so every stage of development should have document because uh, for example one type of document which is important is drawing lah. And then another document is in terms of uh, results of your testing, for example, and then technical report. All right. So when we have all of those documents, for example, after sales, after the product is being sold to the customer, when there is complaint, there are complaints from the customer uh, about defect 
uh, uh, some part of the product, for example. So the product will will come back to us, to the engineers, to the designers, to the technologies, and then we have to do some uh, some uh, I think, for example, we have to do some experiment again, or the, or to find something lah, to, to find something which is what caused the error, what caused the defect of that pro that part of the product, right? So we have to do some improvement lah, improvement of the product if it fails. So, so meaning that we have to refer back to our original design in terms of drawing, to our report, to our result that we have obtained previously. We have to go back all of those documents to study what happened, what is the root cause that caused that product fail to function. Okay, so number five, know how to troubleshoot the breadboarding project. So at least you will know how to troubleshoot the breadboarding project. You have the breadboard and you've got all of the components on the breadboard, the wiring and so on. So if you test it, then it is fails. Then you have to figure out what caused the fail. What, what, what is the cause of that failure? All right. For example, the burn component. Maybe supply is not uh, securely connected, right? So, those things, right? So, so, finish the first slide, which is about the objective, which is learning outcome of the topic. Then, units of topic three. Basically, this topic three is divided into five units, five sections introduction then we proceed to experimenting stage then soldering desoldering and then solderless so solderless is the procedures some of the methods and procedures without uh, without involve soldering so in solderless method there is no soldering involved all right okay Introduction 3.1. Okay. Okay. So at this point, in the experimenting point, at this uh, experimenting point, we don't care about layout. We don't care about packaging. Okay. The final product, we don't care. All of the things that we are concerned is uh, whether or not our product is functioning or not whether or not our circuit is functioning or not. So, experimenting is the process to make sure that our circuit is functioning. Okay. So, basically, breadboarding, what is breadboarding? So, breadboarding is a circuit assembly system that allows components and interconnections to be assembled and changed in their, des in their design stage easily. So, meaning that Breadboarding is actually uh, referring to experimenting, okay? Because we have breadboard, and we do the component connections and eh? component assembly and connections on the breadboard. That is why we call it as breadboarding, okay? But basically, breadboarding is actu actually another term, another word for breadboarding is uh, experiment. Eh? We do the experiment on the breadboard. So. Breadboarding is actually the circuit assembly system, okay? And then we connect all the components and interconnection. Interconnection refers to wirings, lah. Interconnection refers to wiring process. Components mean we we uh, we put on the components accordingly before we do the wirings, okay? Then uh, when we do uh, experimenting using breadboard, uh, it is easier because uh, if we make mistake, we just can uh, take out the component and replace it. We don't have to do desoldering process. I mean, because in when we directly solder, solder the component on the board. So if we make mistake, we have to uh, 
remove the solder which is desoldering before we can remove the component for the breadboard we just we just can just pull out the, the component and then uh, do another arrangement of the component right okay so breadboarding stage the first one is breadboarding stage what is breadboarding stage so it is a construction method the things uh, related to construction we construct like uh, we build a house we construct a house right for engineers related to electronics they construct the circuit so we construct uh, the circuit which is temporary and easily changeable meaning that it is just temporary eh? not permanent so we just place this component it is temporarily to make sure that our circuit is working our sketch our uh, earlier sketch our initial sketch was is working so that once it is working then we we proceed we can proceed to the prototyping so once it is work already work then there is no need for us to keep that breadboard we can just disassemble it and then put the component back Okay, so we can reuse it, meaning that uh, we easily changeable. Okay, so there are some uh, solderless procedure. So about the solderless procedure, we will uh, further discuss about this later in about at the end of this uh, topic three. Yeah, okay, solderless procedure will be discuss about it later. Okay, so about the breadboard again about the breadboard so basically what you need to do you what you need to know about the breadboard so basically the construction of the breadboard as i have already explained in our previous session uh, in topic uh, one i guess in topic one Actually, the connection of the breadboard is like this. As you can see in the first figure, okay, the first figure here, there are blue lines and red lines, all right? So the blue lines and red lines, all of those holes, all of those holes on the blue line and red line here is actually connected to each other. Meaning that if you check the continuity of all of these holes, on the red line for example here they are all connected okay so if you put the component on the connected holes meaning that you shot the component for example if you put the led on the connected holes meaning that you will shot the uh, led it, the led will burn out so basically what you have to do don't connect to the the lead to the holes that that are connected okay so basically for blue one and red one at the top and the blue one and red one at the bottom what normally uh, normally our practice in electronics basically we put on the uh, lines or wires for input and output all right so input and output wires normally will be connected on the blue line or red lines okay positive or negative lah. and then for the green lines here at the middle of this breadboard as you can see it is no longer horizontal like the blue and red one but it is the red, the green one is vertical okay vertical line meaning that all of those vertical lines all of all of the holes five holes overall five holes one two three four five holes in total for the green lines here they are all connected okay so they are all connected ver vertically all right so meaning that when you put your when you put your component so basically the middle holes the middle holes is the middle holes are for the components eh? component when you you place the component at the middle holes so if I, you must make sure that your component is should stay, okay, should 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 stand like that, right? I think whether you can see or not. Uh, 
Uh, okay, the component should be. Uh, I think you can see. It. Okay, the component should be like this. Okay, if you put a component lead. At the same lines, at the same lines, the vertical lines of the green lines, then the component will will short. Okay, will burn out. So make sure that uh, so make sure that you 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 know on how to place your components on the breadboard to avoid any any breakdown of the component. Okay, so this is one example one example of. Uh, I'm not sure where, how many holes, but this is one part of the breadboard. There is another type of breadboard, as you can see at the bottom here, which, which has two parts. Eh? For, for the breadboard at the bottom here, it has two parts, which is basically uh, at the middle of the bus bar, we name it as bus bar, at the middle of the bar, of the top lines here actually this part is not connected that is why we have to put jumpers okay so let's say if you connect the component at this side then oh. you want to connect the power supply from at this side then you connect jumpers from uh, at the middle of the breadboard around here and then connect jumpers to here so basically it, it, the supply will not supply uh, all of your components here because here is actually not connected. So at the middle here, this area, these two parts, eh, left and right part here, is not connected. That is why for a long breadboard like this, you have to make sure that you put jumpers. Lah. You put jumpers here. You should know that this is not connect, so connected. So, okay, as you can see, uh, this is the back, this, this figure shows the back, uh, the back of the, back side of the breadboard, okay, there are some uh, steel or steel connectors, I think, uh, it's not steel, it's, it's like a steel, uh, not copper. Let me see. As you can see, behind of this breadboard, there are some connectors, some uh, steel that connect the holes, okay? Seals that connect the hole. Either it is vertically or horizontally. So this this part and the bottom part is actually not connected. So this is this part is is actually this this area where you have to do the jumpers. You have to put on the jumpers to make sure these two parts is connected. All right. So I think that's all about breadboard. So once you get the breadboard. Please make sure that you know on how to use that black breadboard. Eh? Okay, we don't want if you are uh, easily to burn component like transistor, diode based component. Okay, we don't want to. We have to save cost. We don't want to make. Uh, we don't want to purchase another components because of our because of we have done mistakes on just a careless mistake for example we suddenly burn out our components so so make sure that you use the, the black box uh, carefully all right so second one okay after the breadboarding stage basically in the design stage we will proceed to prototyping stage right so prototyping stage is 
uh, actually the construction method juga that results in rug circuit rugged eh? rugged circuit that is suitable for complete evaluation so rugged circuit means is firm eh? it is already uh, Rugged circuit means uh, it is suitable for complete evaluation. Uh, circuit that is free from errors. Okay, circuit that is robust. Circuit that is strong. Okay, so that is the prototyping stage. So basically, we also produce uh, some kind of PCB at this stage, right? So as you can see in the bottom figure, this is uh, the complete product in terms of our prototype. But this one is on the breadboard. As you can see, the component is carefully connected, is securely connected. So the component is the component layout is quite nice in this case, all right. And this is another example of the prototype, which is using the uh, universal board like this. So this one also one of the example of the prototype. Okay, so the prototype. Prototype is basically something that is already completed. We have already done some testing and we have complete troubleshoot troubleshooting some errors. Okay, so, so we do the prototyping to make sure that that, that product is already robust. Then we can proceed to, uh, to mass production of that product that we built. So finally, the production stage. So the different thing on the production stage, product production stage as compared to other two stages uh, discussed before. Uh, production stage is back, is also the construction method, but it results in permanent, reliable, and easily built mass produced product. Okay, so it is a permanent permanent product before we proceed before we do the mass production meaning that before we put it on the lines of the factory for example in the factory there is assembly lines right so before we put to the assembly lines uh, we must make sure that our prototype is fully functional and that it is robust already then we do the mass production of that product okay so one example of the uh, production stage, uh, the product that, that can, the product uh, that can proceed to production stage is printed circuit board. So, in the production stage, we produce printed circuit board or PCB. Okay, so PCB is basically uh, the product of the production production stage. For example, as you can see, some of the figures here that shows the final product in terms of PCB and uh, the PCB also should have the uh, characteristics like it is it must be something that we can produce it is not so complicated uh, and, and then we must make sure that uh, some of the costs uh, can be uh, avoided I mean uh, we, we want to save costs in the mass production actually so we have to make sure that uh, some of the components that are used in this PCB also uh, at, at uh, acceptable rating and in the terms of cost also will be uh, uh, something that is aff affordable uh, for mass production. Right? So that is the production stage. So different thing. The difference about breadboarding stage. Okay? Prototyping, prototyping stage and also the production stage is already explained in this part, in the introductory part. So now we move on to the experimenting stage. Okay, so experimenting, experimenting stage, similarly, uh, another word for experimenting stage is breadboarding stage. Eh? So we have already know the differences between uh, some of the stages involved, which is breadboarding prototyping and production stage. Now we move on to experimenting stage. So in the experimenting stage, what sort of things that we should uh, consider? So as 
I have told you earlier in product develop development, for, for example, in producing a PCB, what we have to do is not only to produce the PCB in terms of hardware, but also we have to prepare the documentation. For example, one, one example of the documentation that we have to prepare is the breadboard drawing. Okay, so before we proceed to the breadboarding for a complicated circuit, we have to prepare the breadboard drawing first. For a simple circuit, okay, we can just uh, proceed to directly to do the breadboard, to, to do to assemble the component on the breadboard. But for the uh, complicated projects, we have to prepare the uh, breadboard drawings because we can refer to that drawing to assemble our components on the circuit, on the breadboard. So by using the breadboard drawings, we can make sure that uh, the component layout is carefully placed. Okay, the component is carefully placed, which is we, 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 we want to save our space on that breadboard. So we want to make sure that all of the space is occupied by the component. So we do the breadboard drawing. Okay. So we produce the breadboard drawing and also the experimental results document. Experiment result document is the, the document in terms of results from our testing. For example, if we, if we develop the circuit on the breadboard, we want to test it, whether it is functioning or not. Then what we do is we, uh, we put in the report the result that we have from the our experiment, all right? For example, we want the LED to dancing, dancing light, for example. We want to produce the dancing light on the breadboard, on the circuit that can produce a dancing lights of the LEDs, for example. So in our experiment result document, uh, we have to explain that we have already successfully developed that sort of dancing lights. All right, so all about explanations here. Huh? So in this uh, documentation, basically the report that we submit as documentation on the development of the uh, on the development of the our product at broad red body stage. Basically, we provide explanation lah. All right. Next, so some uh, uh, elements, yeah? some uh, elements in the experiment result document. Okay, what document tells actually? Uh, it tells about what happened when the circuit was was built. Okay, did it work? Did it blow up? Okay, when you test the circuit, when you do the experiment on the circuit, is it working or not? Is it instead of working, sometimes it blows up, meaning that the you spoil all of the components that you have. Okay, then what change had to be made to get the project do what the designers intended? Basically, uh, the person that that do the experiment is not the person who design. So from the design, basically they have the design objective, uh, what they want to produce, for example. So you engineers or technicians or technologists have to design, have to do the experiment according the design needs. Okay, so basically, uh, we have to follow all of the requirements. Huh? The the requirement based on the requirement document that we have before. So we have to make sure that we have done all of the things that is required, all the things that are required during the design process. If the project fail, we we will have to explain why nothing more can or should be done with the project. So, this is another thing that is important. We have to explain if it fails. Okay, so we have to find the root cause. What cause it fails? Okay. What of the thing that we have to do to uh, overcome that problem, to improve? What has been failed in the our earlier stage, okay? And 
in the experimental result documents also, uh, we should propose lah, if we have a problem with our uh, pro product or with our PCB, for example, we have to propose a method. Uh, I mean, we have to propose the way how we can do the modification. Okay, we can do the, for example, what sort of what of the things that we have to do in modify our circuit to make sure it is functioning again. And then we need to explain what, what and why changes were required. So basically, uh, in experimental result document, there are two points and there are two uh, there are two things that we should consider. The first thing is stating the conclusion. So we start with the conclusion first, and then followed by the test result explanation about the test results. Okay. So, so normally in, in technical document, conclusion is uh, the last part of our technical document or report, right? But in this experiment result document, it starts with conclusion first. So it starts with conclusion, brief about conclusion, and then what are the things uh, that we have to do to support that conclusion in the result, uh, in the test result document. So we have conclusion and then test results. Uh, things that related to test results. Okay, this is the example of the uh, experiment result document for three channel color organ. Okay, by somebody, by not somebody, but maybe uh, a group that 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 have done the, this project. Okay, so this is example of the reporting of. Uh, reporting related to experiments result document. So you state the the title here. What is your the title of your product, which is three channel color organ, and by who, by which group? Okay, somebody who who, who have done the project. Okay, and then followed by the first uh, part is conclusion. Okay, you conclude. Basically, you conclude, uh, for example, in this case, it's written, as you can uh, read here, all three channels responded with dancing lights. Okay, Three channels responded with dancing lights. Okay, None of those channels failed to, to produce dancing light. All of those uh, three components, three, three channels respond well. Both an FM radio and tape player were used as the signal source. Okay. So this group has done experiment. They test their circuit with uh, different input. For example, in this case, they use the FM radio and also the tape player. So the circuit channels, the three channels on the circuit successfully responded to that input, meaning that the output responds well to the input. Good. So that sort of conclusion huh, has been written in this uh, report. Okay, so followed by the test results. So they list down all of the test results here. Okay, very detailed test results. Huh? Right. Okay, you can read later. This is an example. Example of the experiment result document. So in your mini project, you should produce something like this. All right. So in your report of the mini project, you should produce something like uh, this, which is the experiment result document, the outcome of your project, whether uh, whether or not your mini project, for example, your uh, line follower robot is functioning or not, you have to explain. You have to list down all of the uh, test results huh, from your test, from your experiment. Okay, next, 3.3 .3 is about soldering. So, soldering is one of the basic things in electronics, especially the electronics design. So, we do the soldering. Normally, technicians uh, do the soldering. Uh, it refers here as tie that binds eh, in the electronic circuit. Basically, we want to connect 
we want to connect the the lead eh, the terminal of the component we want to connect the terminal of the component to to its traces or to uh, wires that is connected that connecting that component so we have we want to securely uh, we want to securely place this component on the board so we have to solder it okay so that is the soldering so to do the soldering process what we need is uh, some of the tools here but this is the minimum tools that is uh, that are required for soldering the first one is soldering iron so uh, we, I have the my soldering iron here. The, the first one, the soldering iron. There are many types of soldering iron. Even uh, the iron that use batteries also available. You can see in the if you go to the Shopee, if you want to buy it, you just uh, Google or search the soldering iron. Then you will see the list of the product. Huh? Uh, from different manufacturers okay so basically this is the soldering iron that i have and then uh, most of the soldering iron we can uh, replace the tip the soldering tip okay if it, it is already uh, after long usage of, of this tip basically uh, the, it will uh, uh, i mean will be looks like blunt lah. not it's not uh, not sharp like this so you have to change it so basically uh, every solder every solder iron they also provide uh, this sort of uh, soldering tips that you can replace eh? that you can change to new soldering tips if it is broken or it is worn out because uh, for example for this one i got uh, different uh, types of soldering tips different types of soldering tips uh, this one is shaped like this and another one shaped like a uh, cutter or knife eh? tip of knife The sharp tips like this okay like a tip of knife okay so i have diff different shape of uh, tip here for replacement so that is the solder soldering iron eh? the other one the other component that we should have in the solder okay so for those who are from uh, who are not coming from uh, electronics background make sure that you you know this is solder the the previous one is soldering iron so different thing eh? this is solder uh, this one is soldering iron so different thing so solder is material that is used to to, to connect the joints right so solder is um, a thin material so material made of tin all right uh, and then damp sponge yeah? what we do with this damp sponge yeah? damp sponge is basically when we do the solder there are some carbon or something that is left in the our solder tip what we do is to use the damp sponge to clean it so we use the damp sponge like the, the figure at the bottom here we use the damp sponge to clean our soldering tip soldering iron tip okay of course damp sponge means that we we have to make sure it is wet enough it is not to not too many water but just uh, make sure that the solder the the soldering the damp sponge is wet because you want to clean the dirt that stick that uh, stick on our tip yeah yeah we want to clean the joints and so on and then some of the grease might be uh, stick on the our soldering tip 
Okay. So soldering. So the procedure when we do the soldering, what sort of uh, the what sort of uh, procedures that we have to follow to do the soldering. So there are four. There are four step, eh? four step that we have to follow when we do the soldering. Okay, the first one, what we do is with the iron, with the soldering iron, apply heat to the connection. So this is the connection. I have my LED here. I place my LED to my soldering board, my PCB board. So we put the uh, iron, just just touch the lid, just touch the terminal and the peps huh? not press don't press don't put pressure on it because you will uh, you will break the peps huh? the soldering pad so make sure that you just touch it just to heat up the leads all right and then when you apply heat the next step is to apply solder take the solder and then hold the solder and then apply to the heated connections, heated joints. Huh? Apply the solder to the heated joints. And then next, number three is remove the solder from heated connection. Then remove the solder. But the soldering, the soldering iron is still there. So when you got enough solder on it, just leave the soldering iron there un until some time. Then you remove the soldering iron. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Remember that that four steps. Okay, uh, so remember that four step. You have to do it based on this uh, recommended four step. This is the recommended practice when you do the soldering. Because uh, even my student last year uh, in the previous semester, uh, they what they did was. Uh, different way like for example they put the solder first and then they put the solder iron no uh, make sure that you heat up the component first before you put the solder you cannot go it uh, you cannot uh, put it simultaneously at the same time put the solder and the soldering iron tip no so make sure that you start with soldering iron tip then after the the leads or the joints heat heated up then you apply the solder so basically this is the figure that shows uh, on how you can follow all of these four steps before you, uh, during uh, when you do the soldering of the components uh. okay some of the I think you cannot see on that on that uh, In the figure, at the bottom figure, I think you cannot see clearly. Uh, let me just share my canvas. So I think you can see this, which is, uh, this is the soldering procedure. I, I have already shared this lecture notes with you. So this is some of the... Uh, parts of the soldering iron as you can see here this is the handle shank okay copper tip eh? the tip of the solder is made of copper which is the good material for heating up uh, the steel or something okay copper tip and this copper tip is changeable we can replace this copper tip right and then power cord that is connected to your 230 volt uh, plug or socket right so this is the uh, some of the parts of the soldering iron okay so next so in order to ensure a smooth or even wetting wetting action is uh, another term that is normally used in soldering process even wetting means a good wetting condition, right? So to make sure uh, we get uh, a good wetting condition, we have to 
securely or properly solder our components. So in order for us to make even wetting action, we have to keep the iron on the joint long instant after the solder has been removed. So after, so we do the soldering like this and we heat up and then, where is my solder? So we apply the solder and then we remove the solder. We just leave, leave this, 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 uh, our iron, solder iron tip for a while, for a long instant. Uh, to make sure that uh, the the solder fully melt down and then can absorb can be absorbed by the holes eh, the through holes here securely absorb here and then uh, when it is ready when it's ready just take out your solder tip the heat and then it will uh, it will produce a good wetting. Eh? Waiting. So you have to do practice. I think you just it's not enough. You just to listen to this uh, online session or just to uh, follow, uh, just to follow the videos in the YouTube. It's not enough. The thing is that you have to do it at home. Okay, you have to do it at home practice. Then you will get a good uh, wetting of the your soldering. So I'm going to show you some of the figures that I've drawn in my canvas. Some of the figures that I've, do I've drawn in my canvas here, as you can see. Here. So where should I place this? Uh, So this is an example of the of a good soldering tip, a good wetting, eh? Good wetting. So as you can see, oops, a good wetting. I hope that you can see this. So this is an example of good wetting condition. Uh, as you can see, the left figure, this the figure that I'm showing you here. This is example of a good wetting. Okay, this is a bad wetting. So it's it's like a. It's not fully touch the the board, right? The pads. Eh? So a good wetting is like a mountain shape here. A bad wetting is uh, more like a ball shape. Okay. So how to make a good wetting? Uh, something that you must experience by yourself. So something that you must do at home. To make sure that you get a good wetting. Basically, in a physical class, when I do tests on practical tests for my students, when I do practical tests of my students, I will uh, move around to to see whether they they, they can produce the a good soldering tips or not. Ah, uh, sorry, the a good soldering wetting or not. All right. So make sure when you do the soldering, make sure it, you get a good soldering wetting. Eh? All right, this is another figures that shows uh, some of the steps eh, that you can take uh, during the soldering. Some of the techniques eh, that is teach based on these figures. So you can see some of the tools that are required. For example, we also need some Googles. This one is Google to make sure that's no flying part entering your eyes. So, okay. Google is normally used as a, as a protection, lah, right? And then how you can mount your components. It's basically the traces at the top here and your components at the back. So that you can solder this part, and then how you can use the dam sponge to uh, clean the tip of the solder before you start soldering. Make sure that your tip of the the tip of the solder is uh, clean enough before you proceed to soldering. And then what you do is to apply heat, ap apply heat, or apply the soldering tip to your component lead and also the pads all right then after that uh, put on the solder 
then while you are while you are uh, applying your soldering tip here remove your solder first okay remove your solder first but still your soldering tip is still there then after that once you finish remove your soldering tip okay soldering iron tip and then uh, you can cut out or uh, you you can use the nipper to cut out the remaining leads eh? cut out remaining leads and left it like this so it's like a mountain shape of a triangle like that right then uh, some of the precautions some of the precaution that is required when you do the soldering because uh, because we want to protect our circuit we want to protect our uh, uh, i mean we want to protect our pcb to make sure it is fully functional once we we start to test it right so because uh, this uh, the pads and traces on that pcb is full uh, is quite sensitive to it is easily to be broken so you have to make sure that when you do the soldering make sure that the traces and pads are not not uh, you, you don't broke the traces and pads so when you do the soldering make sure that you do not press to do not over press it just touch okay just touch the component leads and the solder pad do not press all right do not press or do not uh what else you cannot press it and also uh, uh just rest it no press okay apply the iron softly apply the iron softly okay all right so this is an example uh, uh, as you can see in at the bottom of the figure uh, some part of the this uh, solder solder pad has been broken okay it lift it lift the the copper pads already lift because of uh, uh, extra pressure has been put on the that pad right so next some of the tips that you can follow if you like to produce a good soldering process a good solder on the joints okay apply soldering iron to both the component lead of wire and copper foil pad so basically we want to touch we want to touch the soldering iron tip to both the component lead and also copper foil pad all right so make sure that the tip is touching the copper pad and also the the soldering lead the uh, the component lead right then number 2 apply solder first to the same side as the tip then quickly bring it to around the opposite side so we apply tip to the both side apply it the first side and then move it to another side okay and after the joint school clip the excess leads okay we cut out after the joint school uh, we cut out the excessive uh, excessive uh, leads eh, that coming out from the our solder joints all right so next uh, some of the good quality solder connections as you can see some of the good quality solder connection anatomy anatomy of good solder joints as you can see here uh, there is uh, some degree of this mountain right as you can see it should be around 40 to 70 degrees of wetting angle okay so this is a good uh, wetting condition of the soldering process and then it must must be shiny okay something is shiny and then uh, uh, this is an example of the double-sided pcb as you can see in the through hole here there are some uh, copper pad that pass to that uh, through hole to the back side of the, the PCB. 
So the solder must be absorbed uh, by this hole. So must be flowing in that hole. I mean, mean that uh, uh, fully utilized. I mean, it is should be the solder should be in the hole. Okay. Okay. So some uh, example also given on the bad quality of the soldering process as you can see in this figure as well this one is not enough solder applied to the joint very minimal solder applied to this joint and this one the solder only stick on the uh, lead yeah? the component lead so this one is also not enough uh, solder has been used and then this one seems like uh, the copper pad already burn the bakar the copper pad already burn even the uh, we, we can see that a good wetting condition but the copper pad already burn this is also not pass huh? this is also bad soldering process so the good one is this one and then uh, Poor quality of soldering connection, as you can see, some of the uh, sign of the poor quality of soldering connection is the cold joint eh? or disturbed joint. This is this is the figure that shows an example of the cold joint. As you can see, uh, cold joints mean uh, some of the part, eh? the component lead is not fully uh, connected, not not fully connected uh, some of the solders not fully spread to the lead yeah? as you can see in this example the joint looks like dull and gray and gray eh? gray color uh, dull means uh, not shiny and also gray so this is an example of the poor quality of the sudden connection and some other examples of bad quality of soldering as you can see this is an example of the cold joint and also insufficient wetting eh, on the pad, right? This is also an example of the cold joint. This one also insufficient wetting. Not all of the solder uh, attached to the pad. Eh? Some of the pad, as you can see, the pad is still there. You can see the pad, okay? Compared to this one, this one is okay, meaning that it's covered all of the pads. Huh? The round pad already covered by these solders. So the leads can you can see some of the leads appears here, the middle. This one is also okay. It's like a good cone shape of the solder result of the solder. This one is too much solder. So excessive solder. Okay, this one also too much solder, right? Okay, next is about desoldering. This is the opposite word for soldering. Okay, soldering is the process of we put, we connect the joints. Okay, desoldering means uh, we disconnect the joints lah. So desoldering process is the process of removing the solder from the soldering from the soldering joint basically we have uh, three types of tools huh, that we can use to do the desoldering process the first one is the desoldering braid okay okay as you can see in this in this figure the figure below the figure at the bottom how we can use the soldering braid soldering braid to remove the solder from the uh, from the soldering pad so I have the example of the desoldering braid. Here is my desoldering braid. Uh, uh, I think this one is uh, one ringgit. The desoldering braid. Eh? This this size, not 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 large, but just just smaller size to your solder. Just as the same as your soldering tip, solder iron tip. Eh? Okay, this is the soldering braid. It's this made of uh, copper, as you can see the copper color, which is the chocolate. Eh? Okay. Uh, so this is the desoldering braid. 
or another name for this desoldering break as written here, which is the solder wick. Eh? This is the solder wick. So you can use this to remove the solder from uh, the copper pad. All right. Uh, it uses the concept of capillary action. Okay. When you heat up the solder, it will melt down. And then basically what you do is to put the... Basically, what you need to do is to put the soldering iron on top of your soldering blade, and then at the bottom is the uh, solder that you want to melt it. You want to remove, right? So the bottom one is the solder joint, followed by a uh, blade, and then your iron tip. Okay, so that sort of uh, the way how we use the soldering blade to remove the solder. So basically, it used the capillary action, which is uh, uh, if you learn science before, you know that if you put the the something that is uh, we call it a capillary, right? We put something that like a, a tube, huh? tube with small holes, for example. We put it on the something that is uh, liquid or something. It will absorb. It will. Uh, push or the atmosphere pressure uh, will push the surface of the liquid to make sure that liquid will 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 uh, will flow through that tube okay we flow up to the tube okay so that sort of uh, thing about uh, capillary action so it used the concept of capillary action for the desoldering plate and then next is the desoldering pump. Okay, so how it works for the desoldering pump? I don't have my desoldering pump. Okay, uh, for the desoldering pump, it, it works uh, based on the vacuum pulse. So we just uh, we have the desoldering pump. We apply the tip of the desoldering pump to the solder joints with. With the soldering iron, we melt down all, all of the solder on the soldering joint, and then we we just uh, take the soldering bar, put the tip on it, on that soldering joint, then then we press it, we press it, we press it for a while, and then uh, we depress or we we hold it for a while and then we depress or we just uh, leave our hand uh, okay take out take off our hand so that uh, it will work like a vacuum inside this soldering bulb right so when there is a vacuum inside this soldering bulb so based based on the principles of pressure tadi just now uh, the atmosphere pressure will push all of the solder to um, to uh, suck eh? all of the solder to not suck to 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 flow eh? through the holes eh? to the to the holes of the uh, vacuum uh, of the desoldering part bulb tips eh? okay so basically it is like a, a sucking action of the solder okay solder will go up through this uh, hollow tip eh? hollow tip into the bulb then is uh, this one is the soldering pump so i have a soldering break and the desoldering pump at my office that i will do the experiment the demonstration of using all of these component later all of these uh, tools later right so i will show you on how to use them but basically this one is the soldering pump that Normally, I will use this desoldering pump instead of a soldering brick like this. So, I prefer this one, the desoldering pump. Actually, when you use this desoldering pump, it also works as a vacuum principle. Alright? So, basically, what we do is we just press it, this uh, handle, piston handle, we push it downwards. Alright? And then, this, this tip, uh, this it, this tip is held on the solder joint. So we have the solder joints here, and then we put our soldering iron to map to map 
down all of the solder that connects these joints right then after that when it becomes liquid we just uh, put the teflon tip here and then just press this button to suck all of the solder okay all right so that sort of things i think just a simple uh, just a simple explaining explain not not a difficult way of using this i think not difficult everyone can do it even school students also can do it. all right and then finally uh, the 3.5 section section 3.5 just uh, a little bit about uh, there is another way instead of uh, soldering process uh, okay sorry solderless process which is based on the breadboard just now we we just uh, briefly talk about uh, breadboarding which is which is we use uh, the breadboard to assemble our circuit but there is actually another way of doing the same thing which is in the breadboarding stage of experimenting stage by using these uh, five methods okay one of the methods that we can use in uh, solderless procedure we call it a solderless procedure that 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 does not involve a soldering process okay uh, for example the first one is cut slash and hook Okay, the first one is C, C S H, which is cut slash and hook. So what is uh, cut slash and hook is about? I will uh, explain later. Number two is solderless wiring terminals. Solderless wiring terminals. Number three is solderless circuit board, which is the breadboard. Number three we have already discussed in. In our previous sessions, also we have already discussed because this is the mo the most common method of doing so of doing the solderless solderless procedure. So normally we do uh, we use the breadboard no, to do the experiment, but there are some other other methods that we can. Use. Number four is wire wrap, all right? Wire wrap, and then number five is uni universal PCB. Okay, so what is cut slash and hook? As you can see, just look at this figure. This is the way we can do the cut slash and hook using this. Uh, this this one is called the terminal strip, and the other one here is the push in terminal. Okay, so basically we have the wire. Where is my wire? So basically we have the wire. I don't have the wire. Okay. So for example, I have my wire here. Yeah? We have this wire. We just use the nipper or cutter. We don't cut it, just strip it. Okay, just strip this one at both ends, this end and this end using a uh, nipper. Strip it and then you will get the tip like this. Then just put it at the terminal. Okay. So in this case, basically, even though it is solderless procedure, but still we have to do the soldering. Like example for this, uh, the figure at the bottom here, we do the soldering also after we we put on using based on the CH, CSH. Then we we put some solder to make sure it's firmly stick on the terminal. Let me have, right. So. So two basic terminals, which is these two figures. And then some advantages of and disadvantages of using uh, CSH procedure. Okay. So one of the disadvantages is basically uh, this method is not suitable for modern electronic circuit. Okay. Not like breadboard, this method is not suitable for modern electronic circuit. All right. So I think you can read other advantages and disadvantages. Next is solderless wiring terminals. This is a uh, another method that we can use in this uh, solderless process. Uh, so this method is also don't use the solder. We don't need the solder in this method, which is called the solderless wiring terminals. As you can see, this is an example of the. Uh, the yellow one here is the terminal which is we have male 
male terminal and female terminal so we can just connect it together like also this one we have the uh, the insulation uh, the outside of this this terminal and inside we have some uh, I think copper or something that we can join the wire together and then we can clamp eh? we can clamp one side or both sides of this uh, terminal to make sure it is firmly connected and then the other types of uh, terminal joints here all right so this is called the solderless wiring terminal and this is another example of the wiring terminal we have the clamp crimper or clamp clamp that is normally found in electronics based uh, uh, workshop or something like uh, when we go to the lab electronic labs we will see this uh, which is this one we call as uh, clamp or crimper all right so we have some terminals here so most of the terminals is uh, some of the terminal uh, basically the terminals are in different shape because of the different usage a different purpose okay for example this is the ring terminal that we we can put on the screw you have the tip of the screw for example we can screw it and this one also another type which is paid terminals and then but terminal here all right the advantages and disadvantages of the of using the solderless wiring terminals so this one is also incompatible with the modern electronic circuit design so in most of the cases we want to avoid using all of this uh, method because now we are working toward uh, the modern modern circuit eh? modern electronic circuit which is modern pcb which use less uh, connectors okay we use less less connectors and then this sort of terminals need a big space eh? that sort of disadvantages okay and then number three is solderless circuit board this is the circuit board that we have already discussed just now circuit board is uh, the most suitable method of doing experiment for our circuit for example we can easily place ic's on it all right and also other components with many leads eh? so okay advantages and disadvantages of the uh, solid solderless uh, based on the breadboard okay okay all right uh, and then number four is wire wrap so wire wrap i'm gonna show you the figure maybe it's near nearly 6 30 i'm going to show you another figure that i have drawn on my on my tablet here so as you can see here where should i put this i think hopefully that you can see if i put this one here okay uh, as you can see here as i've been i've drawn this basically as you can see um, this is the wire wrap board huh? basically the wire wrap only have some terminals huh? some terminals for example if you want you want to connect the power supply here positive and negative we just use particular terminals okay for example this one we want to connect to the output like speaker or something okay the component that need three wires okay we, we put it here similarly for this one and the, the other one but for the universal pcb board universal pcb basically it has all of those terminals like this it has all of those terminals all of these terminals on this universal pcb so this space is full of terminals all right 
So to make sure that when, when we do the design, we can it is flexible for us to design our design our project uh, using this universal PCB, which is much more flexible. Uh, okay, for this one. It, it is it has already got the terminals uh, at some locations right for this wire rack condition so okay that is the difference the difference between the wire wrap and wire wrap wire wrap and the universal pcb eh? this is the universal pcb as you can see some of the figures that shows the universal PCB, uh, all of the uh, areas on the universal PCB here is is placed with the terminals, all right, like this one also. But for the wire wrap, not all of the uh, part has the terminals. We can just take out, uh, take just pull and take out this terminal according to our needs huh? where we should put this terminal then we just put it in the hole like this right okay some of the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, of using the USA circuit printer box okay and the wire wrap then some of the uh, some of the problems that can be accounted in breadboarding on the solderless circuit board is for example misalignment of wires and component leads so as you can see uh, as shown in the bottom figure here some misalignment which is not fully uh, it's not it is not uh, I think it's about uh, something that we want to produce that is neat okay uh, that is uh, not mess like this lah okay so as you can see is the wires and components is not fully aligned eh? okay so this is uh, one of the problems one of the big problem when using the solderless circuit board like the breadboard and it is also easy to get things move over one or two holes to the right or left where they should be like for example if you want if we want to place the ic we can easily make mistake on where to put it all right sometimes it's we suddenly put the ic for example the vcc which is the supply to the ic to different uh, different location different holes okay so and then when we do the connection it is not connected all right that sort of things lah. and then we want to avoid the wrong direction of ic's because ic is quite sensitive if you mistakenly put the ic for example the grounding part the grounding lead you put it to the vcc you connect it to the vcc which is supply then you will burn the, the ic similarly for the diodes also it is easily burnt uh, component so that make sure that for example uh, the lead of the diode is securely put to the right place to the right connections and then also the transistor and polarized capacitor some of the easily burned components that you have to make sure that when you put it on the breadboard make sure it is not a wrong direction then uh, uh, the solderless procedure so this method also uh, something that you should uh, okay in sorry in the in soldering process uh, something that you should uh, consider is about when you use the single strand wire for example this is the single strand wire one lead only all right for this type of wire uh, sometimes when you solder uh, the wire is okay it's fine from outside we can see that the wire is uh, well soldered okay the joint is completely done pretty well but actually what is inside is actually uh, the leads already broken okay lead already broken and disconnected so when you test the the your circuit suddenly uh, it fails to connect right it's it's uh, it's like uh, when you test it 
I'm going to show you another another figure here. Uh, the fragility of single strand wires. Eh? Okay. For example, if we we use the single strand wire, for example, this is the single strand wire. And this is our board. And then the solder pad here. Some part of the solder pad. And then when I do the soldering. From outside, I, I can see that this is a good, uh, something which is nicely soldered, right? But for one single strand wire, sometimes it happens like this. Which is uh, the wire... This wire, which is single strand, not the multi strand. This is the multi strand, seven core, three core, or multiple core like this. No problem. So if it is broken here, okay, disconnected or just broken several parts, but still uh, there are some. The current can be flown. Still, the connection is secured well. So, no problem with the connection. But for this one, once it is already cut out, once it is cut out inside, we cannot see it inside. Okay. It's already disconnected. Disconnected, right? So it's already disconnected, meaning that when you test, when you do the test, actually uh, this wire is not connected to that part of the wire. Okay, that sort of things. So we have to be careful with with uh, single strand wire. So most of the most of the wires that we have when we do the breadboarding, when you do the experiment later, most of the wires are type of uh, type of uh, single strand wire. All right, because when we use the single strand wire, it is easily for us to to put the wires uh, inside the breadboard holes. All right, so that sort of things, huh? But when we when we do the actual soldering to the PCB board like this, uh, the single strand wire is easily to uh, broken to be broken. Huh? Okay, that's all for the third topic of uh, slide of lecture. And then uh, in the next meeting, I will be moving on the fourth topic. But basically, uh, now I am preparing, as I told earlier in this meeting, I am preparing the assignment that I will publish later. Now, I'm still at the process of drafting the problem statement, instructions, what, what you have to do in your mini project. And then rubric, let me show some of, of, some of my preparation related to your mini project. And this is one of, one of the things that I'm doing, which is uh, how I'm going to design uh, meaning, meaning that in terms of uh, your work plan, all right. Okay, you should name some. Uh, you should give uh, names of your team members actually. So I will, I will give you, I will give you the instruction on how you can appoint team members. Basically, at least two to three members, for example. Okay, I will. I will release this letter in the e-learning, e-learn. So components, okay, the list of the components also here. I think hopefully you can see it. These are some of the list of the components for your mini project. I'm still on uh, developing these this, uh, instructions and uh, materials, uh, preparing, still preparing this material. And then uh, the components also I have checked in the online store, which is Shopee. Uh, you can get it 
some of the components from Shopee. Okay, uh, this IC also you can get it from Shopee. But basically, for this project, I have asked our science officer to prepare uh, 10 sets of the components here. The components that you will you can use that components. If it burns out, there will there will be no replacement of that component. All right, that sort of things. So I will give the instruction letter where you can come here to pick up your consumables, components, uh, wires, and so on. Otherwise, if you cannot come here, then we have to think about uh, think of uh, whether I can uh, uh, do the courier. Okay, I I can send it to you guys by using courier then uh, alright so I will think about it right so basically if you want to purchase all of the consumables by yourself also you can but basically only consumables can be taken from our lab okay you can take out the consumables is no problem components wires and no com no problem but for the tools since you cannot get into the lab for the tools like solder uh, soldering iron and then other tools you have to get it by yourself all right you have to get it by yourself for the tools all right i also purchased it this all of my tools here i purchased it by myself this is not the lab tools okay all of these tools belongs to me then because I will do it, I will use this, this all of the tools that I have here and also uh, the components, I will get components from Encik Man, uh, our lab officer later and then I will also do the same thing like you guys doing, okay, I will do my part, but I will do my part to develop my own line follower and you guys also in your group do your line follower all right so not only instruction for you guys but also instruction to me i will have to do it also all right so there are some other components you can see all of this component not so pricey just uh, below than 10 ringgit not so costly lah all right and then this one is the so this one is the problem statement i'm still drafting this okay uh, the background of the mini project you are going to do line follower robot without my microcontroller and the sketch of the uh, system diagram the sketch of the uh, circuit design sketch and then the final packaging of the line follower okay so and then this is the version 2 i will talk about it later i will give the instruction here then you can read right so that's about that's all about the about the uh, assignment that I will release within this week. Hopefully, I can release the about the assignment within this week. Right. So, what else? Okay. And then, uh, apa lagi ya? And then, ah, okay. About quiz. Okay. Another announcement is about quiz. So, I will... Uh, I will prepare quiz one questions, which is objective questions that based on the topic one, two, and three up to topic experimenting today. Uh, it covered all of those three topics, which is the questions are all objective question, which is multiple choice. So I will release this uh, quiz within this week also. Okay, and then I will announce lah dalam in the e-learn about the release of the quiz the instructions also will be given later all right so that's all for the uh, for the announcement about assignment and assessment so quiz one and also the 
assignment about the mini project assignment okay so i think that's all i will uh, i think i already share with you guys the notes huh? lecture notes that i've written here so i think that's all for today so we we i finish today's lecture up to 6:45 to make sure that to allow you guys to to do your preparation for the prayers and the for your preparation if you want to go to take a shower and so on all right so doctor, okay doctor on Thursday what time what one I cannot hear you clearly okay. can you repeat uh, on Thursday uh, on Thursday uh, sorry the yeah, practical no, on, on Thursday what time are you starting yeah uh thursday at this moment for thursday practical yeah. class there is still no practical class because i'm still preparing the materials yeah, yeah, yeah. then i will announce oh. in the e-learn when we are going to start our practical uh, our practical uh, or the labs huh? all right i i i pula dah ala ala is it clear ala this week uh... So this week no practical. Uh, yeah, 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 it's clear. Okay, okay. Actually, the voice is breaking also from my side. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just sorry, wait. Doctor. So for this week we don't, we don't have other class, right? For this week. We don't have the, the this lab week. Uh, this week until I announce about yeah. the lab. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. wait for my announcement. Doctor, also please, can you can, sure? Uh, sorry, doctor. Uh, can you please share? Share what? I missed it. Your for oh, the attendance. And oh, the attendance. attendance. Okay, I will share it later. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. will share it now yeah. here. Thank you, doctor. Okay, no problem. Okay. Anything else? You anything else? Any questions from uh others about assignment, about mini project, about quiz? Okay. So okay, if, doctor. okay da. Do you have any question? No? No. Okay, if you don't have any question, okay. So we will finish uh, this session up to this uh, time, which is 6.47. Okay, to let you prepare for anything for tonight, dinner or something, right? Okay. So we'll see you again next uh meeting i will see you again in uh tuesday or uh, monday <laughs> monday next week okay the same time which is uh, five okay? okay so that's all thank you okay thank you doctor okay terima kasih sama-sama